Welcome to another video. This is about just dad do what he does on his work day. Yeah, I've been working out of this old library and here you see what used to be shelves and shelves of books. In this photo of the library from the early 1960s, you see there were shelves up top too. What's interesting about this library, there's all sorts of stuff over the decades, like these people hung this thing up in 1970 something, it's still there. There's all sorts of technological artifacts. There's uh, this old bell in the hallway with a weird round switch. There's this uh, thermostat with an analog clock on it. All sorts of cool stuff. But what I'm here to talk about from today... From the 50s. Yeah, from the 50s. What I'm here to talk about today is this, this column right here. Let's go this, up and play some Xbox Fortnite. Yeah. Let's talk about how this works. This is a Sedgwick Library uh, electronic or electric book lift. Boy, I'm tired of playing Xbox One. Yeah, yeah. I need, I need a drink up here. So how am I going to get it up here? Well, I can use the book lift. Let's send a Coke upstairs. Dr. Pepper. Hey, 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 what happened? I ordered a drink and the honey badger stole it. Oh, wait. The honey badger don't care? Yes, the honey badger doesn't care. Now, I'm sure this thing saved a lot of trips for librarians in the in the 60s to go up there. And, you know, and, and they could just move books this way. So going up the stairs, you notice a couple of names. One is Sedgwick, the maker of the lift. The other is this library bureau, Remington Rand. Well, Remington Rand, of course, through a bunch of acquisitions, they sold typewriters. They made guns for the mm -hmm. Army in World War II, a 45. They uh, eventually made the Univac computer. They made, the, through the Library Bureau, they made a bunch of library furniture. Uh, that was at a company they acquired. But it's a pretty big company. So I don't know. They provided this book stack. I don't know if they also provide the lift. When was the elevator invented? The elevator was invented in 1853. This company was founded, Sedgwick uh, Machine Works, in 1643. That's and, a long time ago. Yeah, they started making elevators in like 1890s. These black and white images are from their 1923 catalog. They made all sorts of different elevators for the home and automobiles and lifts. What is that? That's an invalid lift. They had actually one in FDR's home. This is These shots are from the 1958 catalog, which is probably closer to the model we have here. According to the plaque at the front of the library, it was erected in 1950. So that's probably about when the early 50s is when this lift dates from. Originally, this didn't work at all. Um, you could open oh. <laughs> Now that we've got it up there, you can open it. But originally, it only opened about... That's like about the honey badger inside. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So the first thing we had to do was gain access to it. But the access panel. Yeah, the access panel was locked. The library guy didn't have the key, so he watched the lock picking video, then realized, hey, we can just unscrew the hinges. So we got <laughs> that panel off. After yeah, we get... I see the honey badger. Hey, yeah. wait, no, that's not him. No. Nah. After that, we were able to get to the inside. We took some screws off that side, and then we were able to get that side panel off over there. This thing has not been a library. The building has not been a library for quite some time, and neither, you know, so this thing probably hasn't run in quite some time either. Anyway, inside we found this hand crank, which you can use to manually move this, and that was a pain, but it helped and us troubleshoot. And Dad got a splinter. Anyway, we found this switch, which had no effect on anything, and these uh, nasty-looking fuses in here. And, and we, they also, you found some old books, did you? Yes, we found some old library books with like due dates in the 90s. I don't know if that was from this or they, people just shoved it down the elevator shaft. And then it just fell. Yeah, another thing to note, this is a live circuit. Um, it's got that scary wiring box back there. So we never did find the breaker. The uh, The main problem is this. We, never, we always turn off our tape decks when we're working on them. Yeah, that's true. The main problem we found is the solenoid is weak. It'll stay engaged if you hand start it, but it won't engage on its own. On top of the motor, you got this wiring box, which is kind of dangerous. There's the, the cover. Look at those cool old wire nuts. So, uh, and of course, this switch at the back also needed to be adjusted. Sometimes you had to kind of hand crank it a little bit to uh, adjust the uh, sensor past there or something but uh yeah the two main problems with this were the solenoid and the switch not being out of uh, alignment once you crank it past that though and kind of get the solenoid started on its own it's uh powerful enough to hold down but not powerful enough to initiate the coil? pull yeah that's like a coil of wire with a magnet that pulls that thing down so it's, now it's running by itself i don't have my hand on it anymore. that's good Here, 
sure you can check the oil if you want to. Plenty of oil in that motor. Wait, are you going to get the Dr. Pepper out? Oh, it's still there, actually. And I'm no longer working there, so I guess maybe the next person who works on this will find it. I hope it's not stuck on the second floor. Anyway, at the back corner, there was this conduit here. And it has two things going out of it. One is providing power and goes over to where that switch and the fuses are. The other goes... Why didn't you leave the Dr. Pepper in there? I don't know. The other goes here. We think at some point there was a master key. You should have gave it to me. Well, that led to a search down to the scary basement. <gasps> I've yeah. never seen the basement before, but... <laughs> yeah, anyway, so there's a lot of vintage electrical panels down here, but we can never figure out which breaker actually ran that thing. We didn't really try that hard. Uh, the basement, there's the shelves that were originally in the book stack uh, in this basement. But anyway. What else were there? Great. <laughs> if anybody knows of a 120 volt solenoid we could use on this thing, uh, leave it, me a comment there. Uh, most of the time it run, you have to have the door shut Yikes. for it to run. Uh, but uh, you can, we just, these interlock switches are kind of like, we, we jammed a pin cap in there. So it, but really when the door comes down, there's a roller that locks the door. And if it's locked, you can't open it much more than that, which is probably how the people got the books in we found at the bottom of the elevator shaft. Uh, anyway. There may, there's him putting the Dr. Pepper in. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure the last time this thing actually ran, uh, but anyway, that's about it. That's the story of, of the old library and the old book elevator that we sort of uh, brought yes. back to life, the 1950s Sedgwick thing that, that now moves drinks up and down to uh, programmers who need some... Uh, Lunch. Refreshments. Yeah, anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching.